Hey, how's it going everyone? Welcome back to Keeping Fish Simple. So in today's video, we are gonna be building my Amazon Aquascape Aquarium. Now, for the longest time, I've really wanted to make a beautiful aquascape within this fish room. And while I've been doing all my breeding projects, this hasn't been a main focus for me in this room. However, in today's video, that's all gonna change because I've got a wonderful idea for an aquarium aquascape within one of my tanks for my L134 Leopard Frog Pleco breeding colony. Now about a year ago I picked up this colony and it had about 14 fish in it. Now there was a mix of males and females and I'm not too sure what the initial mix was. But recently I decided to sell off some of my colony to make space for other things in the fish room and I left myself with 6 fish. Now in this colony we have 2 females and 4 males. And I haven't been able to get them to breed in this fish room because the tank they're in currently is too warm. The tank that they're currently situated in is at the top of my rack of aquariums and these aquariums normally stay at around 28 degrees Celsius. This works well for all my other types of plecos because they prefer that warmer water, but for the L134s they really do prefer it to be a little bit cooler and because the aquarium is too hot for them currently, they haven't been spawning. So because of this today, we are going to be moving these guys down a rack and this aquarium should remain around 26 degrees Celsius to 28 degrees Celsius depending on whether my heating system's on in the fish room. So this should work really well for enticing these guys to breed and I thought we'd take the opportunity to set up an aquarium that I've wanted to do for a while. Now with this aquascape, I really wanted to take into account the habitat that these guys are from. The L134s are commonly collected in the Rio Tapajos in Brazil. I'm under the belief they're normally found in large ponds within this system that flood in the wet season and the fish can move between ponds and breed during this time. Now within these ponds, there's normally large boulders, small pebbles, a sand substrate, and tree roots extending from above terrestrial plants. There's also a lot of leaf litter and a low pH within these environments, which we're going to be trying to mimic in today's aquascape. But in order to get these guys to breed, we need to mimic the environment of a wet season. So what we're going to be doing is including some kind of moderate flow within this setup in order to entice them to breed. Now the complicated thing with this setup is we needed to do two things. Firstly, we need this to act as a breeding environment for these guys to reproduce in, and secondly, it needs to be appealing and look like the natural environment that they come from. I think it's also important to note that all the tanks within this rack are faced vertically, as this makes room for more tanks and thus more breeding. So we have to take this in mind when doing our setup that our tank's not going to be faced horizontally, and the way we're going to look into the tank is going to be very narrow and long. In a recent live stream on my channel, I actually asked my friend Aqua Malik, who breeds tons of different types of plecos, including the L134, what his opinions were on my setup idea. My plan for this tank is for it to be a space for breeding L134s, but also look really appealing and be a biotope that represents like where they come from in the wild. So have lots of organic matter in there. So lots of branches, obviously has to incorporate the caves and slate probably. I'm a little bit worried about it. Every time you want to take the fish out, have to completely tear down the tank and you yeah. know what I mean? Do you have any yeah. advice? Um, so my main advice is if you want to breed in there, you want to have a lot of caves and stuff and a lot of slate so that the fish have enough hiding places and whatnot. So keep it simple. Stack your structure in the middle of the tank, leaving about two, three inches in the front and two, three inches in the back. And they just have your structure in the middle. This way you can pull caves up, so like have four or five caves on the bottom, and then on top of that you can add a couple of pieces of wood or, you know, branches or whatever just to kind of hold it all in. The benefit of this is like there's spaces in between caves and stuff, so you can see all the fish. You can easily get a head count, see how many there are because you would want that. Generally speaking, in a breeding tank, you want to make sure your females are not getting hurt, things like that sort. Whenever they do spawn, you want to be able to take those caves out either to harvest the fry or to separate the male and the fry into a breeder box, whatever. You don't want to have to break down your tank every time your fish spawn, right? Nice. So you want to have the ability to pull one cave out without the entire structure collapsing and then replace that with another cave, so on and so forth. So I took all this information on board and here's what I came up with. The tank we're going to be using today is a two foot tank, which is 61 centimeters long, 30 centimeters wide and 38 centimeters high. Now in today's video, we're gonna be using some cheap budget-friendly materials to create this aquascape. We're gonna be using some of this landscaping sand that I found at my local hardware store, which cost me about $8. We're also gonna be using some of these sticks which I boiled that I found in the park across the road from my house. We're also gonna be using some of these leaves as botanicals that I found in the park across the road as well. And some of these large rocks and small medium-sized rocks that I also found in a park across the road. I also did pick up a can of spray paint, which cost me about $5 in order to spray the sides of the aquarium black. I started off by removing the aquarium from the rack and spray painting the back and the sides black in order to get a dramatic appeal. I then moved the aquarium back onto the rack and positioned it as shown. 
As you can see, we've got an up pipe at the back of the aquarium, which acts as a drain for the auto water change system that's in this aquarium. So when all of my aquariums on this rack, I run automatic water changes in order to mitigate the workload on these tanks. This system works by water getting pumped in the back and overflowing out the pipe and changes water through dilution in order to achieve the automatic water change system. I started off by grabbing my main pieces of hardscape, which are these tree roots that I found in the park across the road. I experimented with the positions of these tree roots in order to get an idea of how I wanted the aquascape to look. I then removed these branches and added the matten filter into the aquarium. I've decided to go with a matten filter in this build for a few reasons. Firstly, the matten filter provides a sleek look up the back of the aquarium, which is unsuspecting and doesn't create any bulky, unnatural looking items within the tank. Secondly, the matten filter has a massive filtration capacity for this aquarium, much more than a sponge filter could do, or most other filters could do. And lastly, the matten filter is going to create a nice flow from the back to the front of the aquarium in order to mimic the river environments that we desire. The way a matten filter works is by using an uplift tube, which air is pumped into. Air then flows up and out the uplift tube, dragging water with it, and pumping the water from one side of the matten filter to the other side. Water has to pass through the matten filter membrane in order to go up the uplift tube and in doing this the water is filtered through that membrane. After this I then went ahead and washed my sand. Now because this sand is normally used for pavements, it's normally pretty dirty and full of dust. So what you have to do with this sand is give it a wash underneath a tap and the way I like to do this is with a bucket. I just pour the sand in the bucket and then wash it with the water as you can see. I then started adding sand into the tank and started compacting it up towards the right hand side of the tank in order to create depth within it. After adding all of the sand, I started to place the main rocks within the scape. You can see I've placed one rock up the right hand side of the tank and then a rock on the left hand side to create a look like it's going upwards. I then decided that this wouldn't actually be the best look for the tree root system that I was planning, so I just swapped the rocks to the other side in the exact same orientation to create a similar look. I then started experimenting with the positions that I wanted the caves in in this aquascape. We need to include these caves in the aquascape because this is what the leopard frog plecos breed in. You can see I placed a cave within the two main rocks. I then placed a cave on the right hand side on the outside of one of the rocks. I then decided to add the corresponding tree root to the right hand side of the aquascape in order to understand what all the tree roots would look like in this aquarium. I then placed a third cave on the left hand side of the aquascape in order to create an almost circular pattern of caves in the tank. I then went ahead and started placing a bunch of smaller rocks within the bigger rocks to create depth in the tank. What this does is it gives scale to the bigger rocks in the aquarium, as the smaller rocks give reference to the size of the big rocks. I then added a fourth and final cave on top of the rock on the right hand side of the aquarium, as it made the aquascape look less organised and thus more natural. I then continued placing smaller rocks throughout the tank to get a design that I liked. And here's what I came up with. I really like the look of this scape because you can see the caves are almost stacked on top of each other in a way that gives the tank depth and doesn't make it look too flat. It looks like the height of the tank rises from the front to the back as you look at it because of that cave that we added on the right hand side. Another thing that's good about the way I placed this hardscape is the caves can easily be removed and put back into place as needed. Now that the hardscape was finished, it's time to start adding some plants. I didn't want too many plants within this aquascape as the natural environment of the Rio Tapachos doesn't have many plants within it. I decided to go with a few plants. You can see here I have some small Vallisneria, I have some Crypt Wendy's, and I also have some narrow leaf Java Fern. I didn't actually end up using the Java Fern within this setup, but I might add it in a later on video. I started off with planting the Crypts, as these would become the largest plants within this scape. I started off by planting one up the back on the left hand side, and I planted another one slightly in the middle, but closer to the front of the tank, in order to make it look less organised. I then planted Vallisneria on the left and the right hand side of the tank as I wanted this to eventually grow into the aquascape and fill up the back. As you can see, I didn't add many plants to this scape and I think it's going to look really good once they start to grow in. After this, it was time to fill up the aquascape with some water. As you can see, the water is a little bit cloudy but this is just because of the sand and this will clear up within a few days. To add more detail to the aquarium, I decided to take a few twigs off of the leftover branches that I picked up from the park and add them to the bottom of the tank underneath some of the bigger rocks to look like little tree roots sticking out from the bottom and it gave the aquarium almost a mangrove look and you can see how all these little details really add up to create a full image at the end. Although my work here was not done, there was still a few things I could do to make this aquarium look a whole lot more natural and a lot better. A few days later I came back and you can see that the water had slightly cleared up. It wasn't fully clear but I did give it a quick water change in order to clear it up a little bit more to add the final touches for the aquascape. Over the weekend I went to the beach, and the beaches here on the east coast of Australia 
have a lot of these small little pebbles found on the sand near the water. While I was at the beach, I actually went ahead and collected a ton of these guys to use in the aquascape and I dispersed them throughout the big and the medium sized rocks in order to create a lot more depth and you can see just how much better this made the aquascape look. It really looks quite natural with these rocks in it and it paints a full picture of how the entire aquascape is meant to look. I then finished up the aquascape by adding some botanicals. As you can see, I've added some eucalyptus leaves and some other various leaves that I found in the park across the road. Before adding these leaves, I did boil them to get all the tannins and all the toxins out of them and to make sure there's no critters that we didn't want coming into our aquarium. These botanicals will help release a ton of humic acids which will help to lower the pH and also act as antifungal and antibacterials for our fish that are in the ecosystem. Another nice thing that these botanicals will do is decrease the KH in the water which will soften the water and help the plecos to breed. I also added a little seed pod that I found at the beach as well, up the back right hand corner of the tank just to add another little piece of detail to the scape. A few days later you can see the water's cleared up and it's also gone a nice brown colour from those tannins that the leaves have released. This scape turned out exactly how I wanted it to and I really don't feel like there's a lot of things that I could do to make this better. I was really excited to add the fish to this tank and I decided that I'd keep the stocking minimal. I started off by adding 5 neon tetras that were locally bred by my mate Peter and in a future video I will be breeding these neon tetras so that I can add more to this aquascape and have a nice large school of them in here. I then went ahead and added the 6 leopard frog plecos to the tank and you can see they fit in just perfectly. And my work here was done. You can see that the final product turned out fantastic. I'm super happy with how this aquascape turned out, and after not aquascaping for a little bit, I've really reignited the passion that I had for this a couple of years ago. I've been so distracted from aquascaping in the past due to the breeding projects that I've been running that it was really refreshing to finally get to do this again. You can see exactly what you can do with just some of the materials you can find within your backyard, and I really hope that this video showed you that you don't need a lot of expensive materials in order to create a fantastic looking aquascape. In total, I only spent about $13 on this project, but keep in mind I did already have the caves on hand and I did already have a tank on hand. I estimate that you could do this at home for easily under $100, not including the fish. And yeah, I just hope that this inspired a lot of people to try and use materials that they have locally and can find around the house. I feel like this aquascape will look a whole lot better once that valison area really settles in and starts flowing towards the front of the tank and once those crypts grow in and make the aquarium look super natural. Other than that, I'm really happy with how things went with this setup and I'm really excited to keep you guys updated in the future on how this setup goes. Hopefully the leopard frog plecos start breeding and really polish off the whole setup by doing that. Anyways, that's it from me guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate you guys watching this. And if you're here at the end, please leave a like. It really does help this video out. And I'll see you guys in the next one.